Uh, hello everyone, we are from the group 8 of the class Business Analysis and Valuation or AVBB, Faculty of Economic and Business University of Indonesia with lectures uh, Ibu Elvia Rosantina Shauki and then Bapak Rahman Untung Budiman. So at this time, we are going to present the topic about the prospective analysis, especially for forecasting. Okay, uh, next slide. Uh, so this is uh, the group members of the group eight. Uh, there are me, myself, Robi Sheriski, and then the second uh, presenter is Joseph Pinsea, and then the third presenter is Made Indra Suryawan. Okay, next slide, please. And this is the table of contents of our presentation that consists of uh, the first topic about the introduction and uh, the brief uh, company profile that we will be used in our presentation. And the second about the uh, forecasting process that uh, consists some process of forecasting that will be presented by me and will be continued with uh, the second presenter uh, that is Joseph Pinsea using our chosen company. And the third topic uh, is forecasting of using comparable company and then the half of the forecasting will be uh, presented and wrapped up by uh, Made Indra Suryawan. Okay, next slide, please. And the first uh, topic is about the introduction and uh, some uh, brief company profile. So uh, after we make a business uh, analysis, accounting analysis and financial analysis, uh, we can make a forecasting that used to analyze the firm future performance and its financial position. And uh, the prospective analysis divided into the forecasting and valuation, but this time uh, we will present the uh, forecasting. Uh, the best way to uh, forecast the future performance uh, can made by the uh, comprehensive forecasting uh, approach that not only for the uh, earning forecast, but also uh, the cash flow and balance sheet. The, uh, the practical approach to forecasting uh, by using the financial statement that can be done and uh, projecting uh, using the condensed financial statement. For example, the condensed income statement uh, can include uh, revenues, net uh, operating profit after tax or no pet, uh, net investment profit after tax or no pet, in, uh, interest after tax, and uh, profit or loss. And uh, before we talk about the uh, condensed balance sheet that uh, consists of the uh, net operating uh, working capital, net uh, non-current asset, uh, net operating investment, debt and equity. Uh, so uh, to make the forecast, we can uh, forecast by uh, some part like uh, operating items, non-operating uh, non investment, and then uh, the financing item to make the forecasting uh, operating item, we can uh, start to make uh, some assumption uh, to uh, income statement and operating section in the balance sheet for uh, some period. So uh, the assumption for the operating uh, item can be made by uh, the ratio of the uh, operating working capital to the revenue. And then uh, the second part is the making forecasting for the uh, investment uh, section for the condensed uh, income statement and the balance sheet uh, assumption of the ratio of the uh, non-investment to the revenue to expect the calculation uh, level of the non-operating uh, investment and return of the uh, non-operating investment. So uh, for the forecasting for the finance, uh, financing section, we can uh, make a, an assumption uh, from the ratio of the debt to uh, capital to estimate the level of the debt. Uh, and then we can uh, make the estimate to uh, how much the uh, financing amount uh, of the asset in the balance sheet. Okay, uh, next slide, please. And uh, this is the company profile for our illustration. So there are uh, PT Medco Energy International TBK and then uh, PT Energi Mega Persada. So uh, PT Medco Energi uh, with the code MID, uh, MEDC is uh, one of the Indonesian oil and gas company with a key business segment such as uh, oil and gas, power and mining, 
and then uh, the second uh, company that is uh, PT Energi Mega Persada with the code uh, NRG is also the oil and gas exploration and uh, and exploitation company with the source of the revenue are the natural gas, crude oil, and uh, under over uh, lifting with re uh, revenues. But uh, in MIDC, uh, it has a source of revenue from the oil and gas, electricity power, and the lease and finance income. Income. Uh, so uh, for the MEDC, uh, was found by the Arifin Panirogo in uh, 1980, while the NRG uh, was found uh, by the uh, PT Bakri Kalila or B uh, Bakri Group. Bakri Group. And uh, the year-to-date share price for the MEDC between the 505 until 1,040 per share with the NRG has the 154 uh, three, uh, until uh, 334 share. The market capitalization uh, is uh, for the MEDC is uh, bigger than the NRG that is uh, 22.87 trillion, while the NRG uh, 6.35. Uh, okay, next slide, please. And this is the forecasting process. So there are uh, some steps for the, uh, before we make a forecasting. Uh, okay, next. Uh, okay, this is about the forecasting process that uh, have some uh, step of forecasting before we doing a uh, prospective an analysis. Uh, we make uh, the expected uh, to make uh, the expected performance. The analyst usually uh, use a historical relationship between the financial performance firm uh, and industry uh, industry strategy and accounting decision to make uh, the future forecasting. So there are uh, some steps for the forecasting process. Uh, the predict change in the environment, uh, environmental and the uh, uh, firm specific behavior. Uh, so this is the first step for uh, to make the forecasting, but uh, the second will be uh, the assess the relationship between the uh, step one factor and the financial performance. And the last uh, step is we can make a forecasting from the previous step. And the step uh, for this first step, before we make a uh, forecasting, uh, is the predict change in the environment and the firm specific factor. The change in the in environment and the firm specific uh, factor in the future, such as the macroeconomic and the industry competitiveness. So uh, the change will influence the company to, re uh, to respond. And there are some microeconomic analysis. So the first one uh, is the market demand. And uh, there is a uh, change before uh, and during the pandemic. And uh, so there, there is also the future uh, period we think that the pandemic will end. And so it will increase the operational activities and recovery back to uh, normal. So the demand for the oil and gas company, uh, we expect uh, it will increase. Besides uh, the government uh, subsidize for the oil and gas, uh, it will also increase the demand for the. And the second uh, factor is the market price. The crude oil of the uh, selling price, both the uh, MIDC and the ANRG is based on the ICP or the Indonesian uh, crude price, that uh, which is uh, established by the Ministry of the Energy and the uh, Mineral, uh, Mineral Resource. And the concern about the shortage in the global crude oil also boosts the average of the ICP, increasing from the 88.07 US dollar per barrel to 89.10 US dollar per barrel in October to, uh, 2022. And the third, uh, Macroeconomic factor is the monetary policy that uh, in uh, <clears throat> 22 or uh, until uh, 23 August in 2022, the BI uh, or the uh, Bank Indonesia increased the BI seven uh, days repose rate 
uh, by the uh, 25 BPS uh, or basis point to 3.75% uh, for the uh, deposit facility, 30% uh, and the lending facility uh, 4.5% that the increasing interest rate to mitigate the risk of the core inflation and the increase in the non-subsidized uh, full price. Next slide, please. And uh, the increase of the price and demand uh, is also uh, influenced the business strategy analysis. So for uh, the MIDC, uh, this uh, also influenced the MIDC to, uh, to looking uh, the growth to maximize the developed opportunity that existing the asset and uh, the oil and gas business uh, continuously uh, seeking opportunities to extend their uh, reserve life and uh, value to the low risk expo uh, exploitation and exploration, but uh, in the and in the NRG, uh, the business strategy analysis, uh, the business strategy, they are planning to reduce the company liabilities and seek for the financing and refinance with the most effective and uh, efficient, and to maximize the cost uh, efficiency that bring the prospect asset to enhance the group commercial production, and for the NRG. Uh, uh, they also uh, find a new spot or reserve to uh, drilling and also the uh, for the exploration and uh, exploitation gas and oil uh, area in the uh, Malacca Strait that uh, it will uh, can make a prospective uh, performance in the future. Okay, uh, for the next slide, it will be continued by the Josephine. Okay, so uh, still in the first step in uh, before making a forecast, part of it is analyzing the accounting policies uh, of the company. So for key accounting policies, both uh, MEDC and EN ENRG, uh, have applied PSAK 73 for lease liability and also PSAK 72. Uh, and for uh, accounting flexibility, both firms have flexibility in doing implement tests on oil and gas properties. And also, uh, they are uh, allowed to be flexible in stating the results of the test. And they also have flexibility in using estimates for obligations for provisions fixed asset use for life, contract value, and uh, so on. And also for the accounting strategy, both uh, Medco and Energy use similar accounting policies with uh, other firms and the norm in the uh, oil and gas industry. Next. And for the quality of disclosure, our group has concluded that both companies have uh, uh, a pretty good quality in the disclosure. Uh, for Medco, they openly discloses on financial bad news, such as several lawsuits filed, uh, filed about the company, disputed claims, and their response towards both lawsuits and disputed claims. And for Energy, they also openly disclose uh, bad news of their financial performance, which is the total current liabilities has exceeded their uh, total current assets and uh, they also communicate their actions and plans to mitigate uh, the going concern issues that arise from uh, the the event and also their efforts to seek more efficient and effective financing so we have concluded that both companies have disclosed uh, risk related to their operations and also uh, the risk management plans and policies in a very comprehensive manner and for potential red flags, uh, uh, we also have concluded that there are no evident potential red flags analyzed in both companies' reports as both companies, uh, we think that they have uh, fairly and truthfully uh, stated their financial performance. Next. 
And also for the step two, before we make the forecast, is to assess the relationship between step one factors and uh, financial performance. So the projected increase in oil and gas price and the spike of demand for both uh, companies will provide huge opportunities uh, for the companies in the industry to cater to their customers and also optimize their ability to supply the commodities. Innovations and technology will also help both companies at every stage of the oil and gas life cycle and will promote efficiency in exploration, drilling, and production process. However, companies in this industry should be prepared for government inter interventions in keeping the prices of the community low through various price regulations. Uh, and also companies should also watch out for huge shifts and transitions from oil and gas energy to clean energy as encouraged by regulators and environmental orga organizations. Okay, uh, we are entering the forecast section. Next. So the first one we are going to discuss about the energy and the assumption for forecast of the company. So uh, as you can see in the slide, uh, here are some brief assumptions. We are using some calculations of uh, the total revenue growth uh, and we split the revenue for natural gas and crude oil and also the under or overlifting NDMO. And then we also uh, use the percentage of revenue method, which consists of COGS as percentage of revenue, GNA expenses, other income, other charges, and tax expenses. So we also have averaged the total uh, from the historical performance. And then we uh, try to forecast it for 2022 and until 2025. So the source of revenue consists of 73% of natural gas sales, 34% of crude oil and 6.6% for under or overlifting and DMO. This is based on Q to 2022 financials and for revenue we assume that considering the price and demand of gas and oil are expected expected to rise uh, we also projected that there will be growth in the total revenue and for under or overlifting and dmo this this is a new account only existing in 2020 and it was non-existent before so we uh, also make assumption based on that and the lack of historical data for the account and for cost and expenses uh, and balance sheet items assumptions are made by taking average of past performance behavior next uh, so this is the result of our forecasting process uh, for an, uh, PT Energi Mega Persada this is for the income statement so the highlight is that the revenue for energy still shows an increase through the years. However, in 2023 and, and, and 2024, we expect that there will be a decrease since uh, we project and we forecasted that there will be su substitutes for um, gas and oil energy. And also production cost or cost of goods sold is forecasted to show an increase for uh, further exploration, exploitation. Uh, also, it is in line with the increase in revenue projections. Next. So this is for the balance sheet. Uh, we have forecasted that the receivables uh, are projected to increase with the increase of sales to customers. And as stated in the going concern disclosure on the notes to the Q2 2022 financial statement, the company will try to optimize efforts to reduce the company's liabilities and seek financing that are more effective and efficient. So we projected that the total non-current liabilities will decrease over time. And also looking at past behavior, energy uh, did not seem uh, very often or regularly. So it is expected that the common stock will not uh, show changes overall. Next. The next one is uh, Medco Energy Assumption. 
the source of revenue is about 794% consists of oil and gas contract, 4% electric power contract, and 2% lease and finance income. Uh, as we can see, I we divide the table to three parts. The first one is revenue growth, and the second one is cost and expense, and the third one is the assumption for balance sheet. An increase in oil and gas revenue in 2022 due to the Russia-Ukraine war that resulted in energy crisis. Uh, downfall in 2025 oil and gas revenue because of UN resolution to boost green energy usage, which will reduce the demand for renewable energy. For the electric power revenue, we assume a 2% constant growth as it is monopolized by the Indonesian government. For other costs and expense and balance sheet items, we assume to make uh, take average by past performance behavior. And this is the uh, income statement forecast for five years until 2027. Uh, the, the year 2022 is an expected earnings that increase almost 1000% due to high demand for oil and gas products. Net income forecasted in 2027 look really strong, amounting almost $1.2 billion from half billion dollar it expected in 2020, expected from quarter to 2022 data. The key account to watch is the finance costs, which amounted almost 1.5 more than the general administrative expense in 2021. Due to the core operating currency using dollar and 50% of its geographic sales done internationally, we think that Medco can benefit from the strong dollar phenomenon. The next one, we got balance sheet forecasted for Medco Energy. Here is a condensed format where there are only current asset, non-current asset, and also uh, equities like shareholders equities, other equities. The total asset growth of Medco show an expected growth where in 2021 totaling around 4 billion and in 2027 forecasted to be around 11 billion US dollar. I mean a mere 250% increase in just five years. Its non-current asset also increased due to constant capital expenditure to keep up production with customers' demand. The retained earning, which is ca calculated using assumption of retention ratio of uh, 50% of, uh, this is to be 30% of net income, although Medco historically never pay out dividend because uh, in the previous year, they take a loss. And for shareholders' equity, we assume to be constant throughout the years as Medco take more debt financing more than equity financing. Uh, the next slide is the conclusion. So forecasting used to analyze future performance. Forecasting will be a base for valuation calculation or share price because the method of valuation usually used to present value from existing current balance information like free cash flow. Keep in mind that forecasting is only a prediction made by analysts and deviation will always be there due to unpredictable external factors like the economy, interest rate, or business environment. So I think both of this company, PT Medco Energy and also PT Energy make up a really great potential where uh, the commodity like oil and gas is uh, increasing due to the Ukraine war. And also uh, there are gas, which is one of the energy used in steam power plant to produce electricity. So the final result, the final result, we advise investor 
to buy and hold both of the company stock. And we also expected to see a 10 to 20% increase in share price from current date. We also advise to hold until next year, around half quarter, where earnings announcement will be made or maybe a potential dividend will be made. But also be careful as these two stock price movements are highly correlated to crude oil and natural gas futures contract. I think that's it for the presentation. Uh, thank you for watching this video and we hope that whoever watched this can gain a little bit of knowledge about uh, analysis and business valuation.